three, two, one. We'd like to welcome you to another edition of Grok Talk, brought to you by New Hampshire's leading conservative blog site, GraniteGrok.com. We are your feared, extremist, right-wing, hard-charging, gun-toting, opinionated, outspoken, rabble-rousing, letter-writing, radio, microphone-stomping, conservatives, and rational libertarians. So get ready for more news and opinion you could only get from GraniteGrok.com. Grok Talk. Alrighty. We are in Hooksit, New Hampshire. They call it Manchester, but it's not Manchester. It's Hooksit. At the Southern New Hampshire University, at Southern New Hampshire University, no, the, for the American Principles Project Cornerstone and the Family Leader sponsorship of today's event, Practical Federalism. The event is going to start any minute. Uh, the minute the event starts, we're going to stop talking so that we don't get uh, feedback in our microphones from the uh, event. We are directly plugged into their board, so we should have good sound for the entire event, and we will continue to broadcast for as long as we can stand to be here, as long as no, none of us have to leave, and this goes on until 6, so it could be a long day. But uh, those of you who are listening to us uh, live streaming on NHCR, on The Rock, uh, we will be off the air at... 11 uh, on their channel. If you want to cruise on over to granitrock.com, uh, we are still streaming both on Spreaker and, and a live stream video and audio if you want to check out some of the different segments. Uh, we're going to have Jeff Chittister, of course, who's a, a local media guy, and um, Brian McCormick from Cornerstone Research will be there. Um, <laughs> Hi, how you doing? i got to change my connections here. Hold on a second. All right. Let's plug you in. Da, 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 da. Headset, sir. We'll have you in here in a second. Um, but, uh, yeah, GraniteRock.com after 11 if you're on NHCR The Rock. And uh, otherwise, stay on GraniteRock.com. We'll be here all day until the event is over. Screaming. And you, oh, i got to turn Mike's headset up. Stream, streaming and screaming. And, don't forget, and screaming. Our, don't forget our guest here. Yep, i got to put his headset up. There you go. Good afternoon, sir. And, and you are... Ken Ivory, Utah State Representative. Oh, Hi, Ken. cool. How are you? Good. And, and what brings you to New Hampshire for our federal federalism? Well, forum? we are looking for you all to uh, <laughs> find a candidate for president that is going to... Uh, oh, get rid of those sec- federally owned lands? The fed- secure ah. the transfer of the federal lands so we can free the land so that we don't uh, end up burning up 10 million acres of forest every year and... Burning millions of animals, destroying our watershed, and making our communities unsafe. And, 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 and uh, bulldozing Bundys and all the rest of it. We yeah. actually had a, a guy that we work with here in New Hampshire um, who was on the Bundy Ranch and uh, was in charge of coordinating the defense of the ranch, and we had him live on the show for two hours while he was there. What a story that was. Yeah, you know, that's really unfortunate. If you look at... Uh, that never should have been in that situation. Nevada and Nebraska have the exact same enabling act, the mm-hmm. exact same terms of statehood. In fact, the western states and the eastern states all have the same terms of statehood mm-hmm. that the federal government held the lands in trust to mm-hmm. dispose of them at statehood. That's what the Constitution says. Imagine that the, yeah. the Constitution says Congress has the power to dispose, and we should expect that they would do that. I mean, it never should have gotten there. So Nevada and Nebraska, their statehood was within three weeks of each other, their mm-hmm. statehood agreement. Nevada goes from more than 30% federal land down to 1%. Nebraska yep. does, while Nevada goes from 86% to 81%, and it's still locked up. They have 80-plus percent land that's federally controlled uh, and, in Nevada. And, and, and they keep declaring parks and monuments and other things to make those lands unavailable for any kind of commercial or other use by the states. Yeah, correct. And so when you think about it, I mean, we all want healthy air, healthy water, healthy wildlife. We want we want safe and vibrant communities and abundant recreational opportunities. And we've been told that the way to get that is to have bureaucrats thousands of miles away lock the lands up like they're in a museum. But it's not working. What that's getting us is millions of acres burned, air polluted, watershed destroyed, millions of animals killed, and communities depressed. And so we've got to free the lands. And so who better to manage a garden than the gardener who knows the conditions, knows the soil, knows the climate. Mm -hmm. And uh, the interesting thing is Canada's already done this. So Canada was in the same situation where their land was federally controlled and they realized this doesn't work. 
And so they've turned land, water, resources over to the provinces and territories. So guys, clearly, we should be able to protect liberty, property, self-governance at least as well as Socialist Canada does, don't you think? Yes, uh, uh, I, you <laughs> would hope so. uh, New Hampshire's got a lot of... You can't really tell on this map, but um, if you look at, at the... Um, all the land that's not just been locked up by the federal government, but we have these environmental agencies that come in and they tie land up, you know, for watershed or whatever they want to do. And it, there's a map of it somewhere. And I think Jane asked us to take a look at it, and she had a link to it. And the whole state's just sucked yeah. up. You know, it's not, it's not, nobody owns it, but these organizations and, and the federal government. And it's been d done on purpose where they want to say, well, it's for next generations. No, this is more insidious <laughs> than that. They just don't want people outside of certain areas, and this is where they want to... They want the pristine areas that never really existed. Yeah, And when you think about this kind of museum management, federal bureaucrats are locking the land up like it's a museum. Hands off, don't touch, right? Yeah. Well, what that's getting us is tree densities that are catastrophic. That's why we're seeing millions right. of acres burned, and, and that's going to leave scarred landscapes, devastated watersheds for generations. Yeah. That's not saving the land for the next generation. No, not at all. It's not saving the air or the planet either. It's releasing far more carbon and, and other gases into the uh, into the atmosphere. And oh. ozone, uh, yeah. don't forget. Yeah, trees tell, create yeah, ozone. Yeah, yeah, let's, uh, <laughs> let, let's, right. let's, let's have Gene McCarthy come and suck on that. Yeah, yeah. Now, now when you think about so so why would they invite a Utah representative talking about western lands to New Hampshire, right? Because it, it affects all of us. It affects all of us. Yeah. So so think about this. You all are paying, they're extracting 2 billion dollars a year to manage and subsidize and cripple western states. Well, that's coming from the eastern states. Now, more importantly, when Congress wants to grow, they have the getaway car. <clears throat> when Congress wants to grow its spending, when they want to grow its power at everyone's expense, they hold $400 million a year hostage in the subsidy payments called PILT, payment in lieu of taxes. I've got counties that have less than 3% taxable land. And so you all are subsidizing for mm -hmm. the federal government to control that land. Well, when they want to grow food stamps, for example, Harry Reid wanted to grow food stamps $750 billion. Mm -hmm. He holds $400 million hostage, and the Western states have to vote for it because that's their lifeline. And so they grow the government at everyone's expense because they hold those Western lands hostage, and that's that's eroding our very uh, the very fabric of our constitutional system. Yeah. Well, the question I have is, given that the the Western states have been complaining about this for decades, why aren't they electing folks that will go to D.C. and say enough of this nonsense? Yeah, you know, it's a really fascinating question. That's happened throughout history. Do you know that that same question came up when? Michigan and Iowa and Louisiana and that great western state of Florida was 90% federally controlled for decades. Mm -hmm. And there was one senator from Missouri, a Democrat, his name was Thomas Hart Benton. And he said, my election to the Senate found me doing battle for changing this system of disposing the public lands. He said, I resolved to move against the whole system because it's a monopoly and it's, it's, it's monopolizing the vacant lands of the West. He's talking about Florida. He's talking mm. about Iowa and Michigan. <laughs> and he said they need to fix their eyes steadily on the period of the speedy extinction of the federal title to all the lands. And they did. And so that's the key. So that's being here. You guys are the lead state in picking the, picking the presidential contender. That senator's name was Thomas Hart Benton. So we need you all in New Hampshire to find the modern-day Thomas Hart Benton to free up the lands. Let me tell you another reason why it matters to people in New Hampshire and across the nation. 60 Minutes about three months ago did a piece that said our modern life devices are in the grips of China. All your computer technology here, renewable energy technology, and our military technology. Mm -hmm. the, the rare earth metals which are used in magnets and electronics, right? Exactly right. The rare earth elements. China controls nearly 90% of the market on rare earth elements. We can't put a plane in the air, a battleship on the water, without China agreeing to source rare earth elements. Guess what we have locked up from New Mexico to Alaska? Rare of course. The elements. world's most abundant supply of rare earth elements. What sane nation puts its national security in the grips of foreign powers? NIMBYs. That's what it comes down to. Wow. Nothing anywhere near me. N not in my backyard, but then you've also got the bananas, which is basically build absolutely nothing anywhere near me. <laughs> I love that one. I always like that. You know, yeah. Exactly right. Exactly right. Now, here's, a, here's another one for you. Um, in just Utah, Colorado, and Wyoming, there's more recoverable oil 
than the rest of the world combined, mm-hmm. locked up in federally controlled lands. Oh, I, yep. I, I believe it. And Obama keeps moving to, uh, to lock up a bit more of it. And Clinton did the same when he was in charge. And even Bush was persuaded to do some of that by, you know, by the mostly liberal Congress, even when it had Republicans in it. Exactly yeah. right. So Clinton, three weeks before his last election, locked up two million acres in Garfield County, in and around Garfield County, southern Utah. Two trillion dollars worth of the world's cleanest burning coal. They lock up a monument. Never talk to a single Utah. He announces it standing in Arizona. They talk to the Democrats all around the state. Their own, their own Center for Environmental Quality said, this doesn't warrant protection on this scale. We didn't do a NEPA analysis, National Environmental Policy Analysis. They just locked it up as a monument. Yeah. And Garfield County, where that's located, just recently declared an economic state of emergency because their schools have now gone from 157 through 12 students to 50. Their schools are about to close. They know when their schools close, they lose their families and their, their county becomes a ghost county. They only have 3% taxable land. And so we're calling on people in New Hampshire to hire a presidential candidate like that Thomas Hart Benton that has the courage to bring about the only solution big enough for the economic security of our nation, national security, environmental protection. We don't need to be burning 10 million acres with the federal government, federal bureaucrats managing it like a museum where it's hands off, don't touch. We got to manage the land like a so, garden. So, but so, so, why, also so why aren't these states? Sorry, Skip, why aren't these states producing governors and senators that are going to say the hell with this? You do not have the right to these lands. We're going to seize them. Not one of us and take on the federal government, but. 10 or 20 states are going to seize these lands. They are our lands. They are state lands. Get the hell out. And by the way, your federal agents aren't welcome. Yeah, and that's starting to happen. Yeah. Uh-huh. But the other problem <laughs> that comes up, and we've, we've been fighting it for a number of years here, is the EPA HUD and DOT's Sustainable Communities Initiative, which they've really pushed hard here. We're seeing it in the Twin Cities, Minneapolis and St. Paul. We're seeing it in the Oakland base. Um, where they're turning to unelected, unaccountable bureaucratic agencies, giving them a ton of money, and trying to do, um, and I hate to say it because then we, you get referred to as tin hat uh, folks, but the Agenda 21, which is to rack them and stack them, we see this out in Portland where the housing prices are so high because they say, this is our urban containment philosophy. You cannot build further out. And then they wonder why nobody poor lives there anymore. Right, I mean, right. this is basically another prong in that same approach. You're talking about the big lands, but they're also doing it to the cities as well. well what to do? Well, the very fa- fundamentals of our system, liberty, property, self-governance, right? It says to secure these rights, governments exist among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. Well, that means we're the boss, but if we want to be treated like the boss, we got to act like the boss. And so just what you're saying. We've now got, you know, we passed my bill in Utah, the Transfer Public Lands Act. We've had legislation introduced in in every western state but California, passed in many. Four eastern states have now done resolutions supporting the transfer of public lands. So you've got South Carolina, Georgia, Tennessee, Arkansas. Uh, I know that here in New Hampshire they tried to run it last year, so hopefully they're going to bring it back next year and, and keep moving forward. But no, this is an issue that affects everyone because... Property, as you were alluding to, property is the master right. George Sutherland was our one and only member of the Supreme Court from Utah. He said, man has three great rights. Life, liberty, property. Correct. If you, if you give a man his life, but you take away his liberty, take away all that makes life worth living. You give him his liberty, but take away the property, which is the fruit and the badge of his liberty, you still leave him a slave. Yeah, the U.S. Constitution basically well the declaration said life liberty and the pursuit of happiness which was originally pursuit of property in the new hampshire constitution it actually says property not happiness property because we had relatively few slaves up here and we could do that uh and and once upon a time this this state had the courage of its convictions now we're having to fight liberals like we do everywhere else yeah in fact all the state constitutions at the time life liberty property that comes right from john locke right and by pursuit of happiness they meant property and self-governance correct right. and the problem is as, as we talk about all the time the further our educational system gets away from those notions then anything can happen right and that is a severe problem all right i think we're about to start um so we're gonna thank well, you very well, much outstanding guys can, so can, uh, uh, so we're gonna be posting this later take one of your 
take one of our cards and get in touch. We'll be happy to have you on by phone on a normal Saturday. Yep, we can have you on the show any Saturday morning between That'd 9 be and 11 a.m. our time, so we'll do it later so you don't have to get up too early. <laughs> That'd be great. And then uh, and and tell then us how we can reach you. How, yes, how, for, how, for, for more information, AmericanLandsCouncil.org, AmericanLandsCouncil.org. There's a petition there. Sign the petition. We want better access, health, productivity, free the lands, and then also Facebook page, American Lands Council. Thanks, guys. All right, thank, thank you very you. much. Perfect. All right, we're going to swap out our connectors here and get Thank ready. Thank you, I see, uh, where'd it go? Da, 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 da. I got cables everywhere. Where's There's that? another That's one of these th dangling somewhere. No, here that. Is. No, this is not. This is the one he was just using. Oh, this okay. See, microphone. Ah, ah there we go. All right, I'm going to plug in that, and we're going to take a break and see what happens while they're doing their thing, and uh, hopefully we'll be right back with the actual event. Here comes Jeff to the podium. So maybe we won't go to a break. Microphone's off. Crop TV.